CBS MLB insider Jim Bowden in to put a bow on day one. And what a day it was, Jim. I mean, exciting baseball start to finish. Let's start where it ended. Uh, Michael King straight up comfy in his performance. Seven innings of scoreless baseball, punched 12. What stood out to you most about the command he had over his outing? Yeah, I, I think it, I think there was the fact that he was so deceptive with his delivery. His fastball was 98 miles an hour. He was able to put it where he needed to put it. And then he had that sweeper that was just incredible. And all those Braves right-handed hitters kept kept waving at it when it was out of the strike zone. I'm just the combination of him mixing his pitches was amazing. You know, he's got that cross-fire delivery. It's really tough for hitters to pick up. But you could see on that last pitch right there, we saw that all night long. And then he threw that two seam were into right handers and didn't have a chance. I mean, that's the thing. He's got so many different shapes, so many different sizes coming at you with so many different velocities of all of his pitches there. He was just in command. I mean, 12 punch outs, no walks. Are you kidding me? But I think you made a great point, Joe, that I don't want to have lost is that Fernando Tatis Jr. Hitting that two-run homer after Lewis arise and single the left field, that not only set the tone, but it got the crowd into the game early. Mm. And that sellout crowd that has been there all year, they drew over 3 million fans this year. They were so loud from the beginning of the game to the end. It just gave them a boost. And then every time Michael King punched someone out, it just got louder and louder and louder. Truly a dominating performance tonight by the San Diego Padres. And certainly showing you why there's a lot of people in this sport that think they have a legitimate shot this year of winning the World Series. They were riding high. I got one for you here, Jim. 12 strikeouts, no walks. That's the second most strikeouts without a walk in postseason history. Two have gone for 13, that being Tom Seaver in 73 and Garrett Cole back in 2020. Something to be celebrated on this night for King, who was a feature in that Soto deal, as was Kyle Higashioka, who... Added a little insurance on the end of this one. Call your Yankee friends as well here. I mean, start spreading the news. They got some pieces coming back in San Diego, but he delivers on his end, King that being. The offense ignited, as we said, by that early Tatis big fly. It's great when the complimentary pieces can pitch in, and you need that to make a run in the postseason, but what does it mean when a team gets their biggest name to deliver in big spots? Yeah, you need the big names to do it, like Tatis. And remember, uh, Tatis wasn't there last year, and the last time he was in the postseason, it was during the pandemic, right, where he had the stick figures in the stands. So this is the first time that he's played in a playoff game with the crowd there cheering him on, and for him to take advantage of that early on, uh, certainly I thought was extremely important. The other thing that was important, too, was that Mike Schilt uh, took King out after seven innings, understanding that you want him to pitch if they get to the division series against the Dodgers. And then he also wanted to get his relievers in there right away, which I think was important. And Jason Adam was nasty in the eighth inning with that 97 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone. And then the changeup at the bottom with 20 miles an hour differential. And then Suarez uh, finishing the game. I think if Mike Show wrote a script for this game, mm -hmm. uh, it was exactly how it ended up being uh, played out for him. It certainly played that way. The script has been a tough one for the Atlanta Braves who have Really had to give everything to get to this moment. Now up against it and the tank on E. If you remember last year, JB, and I know you do, there was the long layoff that they blamed for the lack of offense when they got that first round by. Here, they got to go back-to-back -back days with some travel in between and big travel at that. There is a prowess to this group, no doubt about it. Leadership in that clubhouse. Do you see a last surge in them on Wednesday or just too much of a toll from this last week of baseball? I mean, look, I think it's too much of a toll. I also don't think they're as good a team as San Diego has. Uh, look, I don't think there's any question we're missing Ronald Acuna Jr., right? You're mm -hmm. missing Austin Riley. Uh, Ozzy Albies has to hit right-handed full-time because of the injury that he is still dealing with. Uh, Spencer Strider has had the Tommy John surgery. This is not the Braves team that we saw in March. Um, and they fought, and they got here, right? But to your point, you know, they lost the first game of the doubleheader on Monday, and then they kind of backed in by winning the second game of the doubleheader, and then they lost Chris Sale for this whole series. So it's not just Acuna and Riley and in Strider. Now you lose sale for this series, and A.J. smith Shatter had to start today. I mean, it's just everything going against the Braves. I just can't see a pathway for them to winning two games in San Diego and advancing. But I, th I think this, and I said this to Alex Anthopoulos, their president, earlier today. I said just getting here is an amazing feat. When you think about all the injuries this team had to endure all year. Yeah, when a team gets bit by the bug the way they have, we usually don't see them even this deep into the season. A, a great point there and a great sentiment offered to the man who has 
really constructed this in his mind's eye. We got to go broad here because it was a big day of baseball. We're talking winners and losers, JB. Your biggest winner from day one of the postseason is who? Oh, it's the Aces. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're having a wild card two out of three, you need your Aces to step up and win the game for you. And we had that happen in three games. We just talked about the Michael King game. Seven innings, 12 strikeouts, no walks. But we also saw it happen today. Tariq Skubal against Houston. Six innings, four hits, no runs, a walk, six Ks. You don't give up any runs, you win. That, that's just the way it is. And then Cole Reagans, the ace of the Royals, went up against Corbin Burns in Baltimore. He shut them out. Six innings, four hits, no runs, no walks, eight strikeouts. I mean, those three aces combined 26 punch outs and only one walk and no runs. That's what you want. That's why you pay aces. That's why they're the highest paid in the sport. And those are the go-to guys. And, you know, Major League Baseball is a lot like the NHL in the playoffs, right? You got a hot goaltender in the NHL, you can run the table. In Major League Baseball, you get a hot pitching staff, you can run the table. And, look, if, if in fact, Detroit beats Houston, if, in fact, Kansas City beats Baltimore, uh, I don't think there's any question that the credit will go to the Game 1 starters that were able to shut them out. Every fifth day, and today is that day. It wasn't everybody's day, Jim. Your biggest loser on Monday? Yeah, you know what, Joe? I'm going to go with the Baltimore Orioles team because I felt like if they were going to beat Kansas City, which I thought they were, I thought the only way they do beat them is they had to win the Corbin Burns start, and they didn't do that. And so now you've got to face a Kansas City team where I like their starter, Seth Lugo, better than Zach Eflin. I like Michael Walker better than whoever Baltimore would throw out if there's a game three. So the starting pitching is now going to be an advantage to Kansas City. And keep this in mind with the Royals. They got Vinny Pascantino back. And when you put him with Bobby Witt Jr. and Salvador Perez in the middle of the lineup, it's tough to pitch around Witt and Perez. Pascantino gives you that support. The other thing I love about the Royals is they don't strike out at all. They put the ball in play. Nobody in the American League struck, uh, struck out less. So now you've got the pitching advantage and the contact and three big guys in the middle. The best player on the field is Bobby Witt Jr. He's a Kansas City Royal. So I think the Orioles losing the Corbin Burns start, who pitched great, by the way. It certainly wasn't his fault. But losing that game puts them in a really precarious position and the most likely team to be sent home after game two. Every day is Monday when you're down 0-1. Today, obviously, Tuesday. And we look forward to Wednesday's action. Game two with Detroit putting Houston on the brink. All that history in Houston. Could it come to a close with that home losing streak? Alive and unwell for the Astros. The Royals trying to go from 100 plus losses a year ago to a divisional series this go around with Bobby Witt Jr. leading the way. The Mets, I mean, what a roller coaster ride it's been for these Mets from the way they started to where they are and one win away from that same reality. The Braves and Padres going to round out the action out west. Jim Bowden back in the mix to talk Wednesday and let's start with those Mets because earlier in the day following that win Jim we talked about momentum and what it's meant to this Mets team their ability to harness it and use it throughout the season. They got all of it going into game two. How do you expect them to use it? Yeah I think one thing we do is we have to first look at history of the wild card series since we went to the two out of three series uh, the last two years all eight series ended ended with whoever won the first game won the series right. I mean, I know it's a small sample size, but it is telling. And of those eight, seven were sweeps, and only one went to three games. Now, I'm not saying that's the way it's going to be going forward, but I don't think we can ignore that it happened the first two years. When I look at the Mets with Sean Manaya on the mound, that's their ace. That's their best pitcher that's going to be on the bump on Wednesday. I think it puts the Mets in a great position. They have momentum. They're swinging the bats extremely well. The hitters are timely. They don't try to do too much. You watch the Mark Fientos at bats today going the other way for two RBIs. Iglesias going the other way uh, for an RBI. Um, Francisco Lindo, MVP candidate. Like the Mets, everything is like going their way. And so I'm going to be really watching Manaya because if he can do what the Aces did today, the Mets may have a sweep and eliminate the Milwaukee Brewers, in which a lot of people uh, will consider a huge upset. I think other things looking at tomorrow, uh, the Braves trying to push for a third game. Max Fried will take the bump against Joe Musgrove. 
But Musgrove has pitched really well. Uh, it's going to be tough to beat Joe at home, I'm telling you. I can see that as a sweep. And for the Baltimore Orioles, Lugo against Eflin, I can see them getting sweeped. I think the most fascinating game will be Detroit and Houston because it's going to be a bullpen game for the Detroit Tigers. They're going to start Holton on the mound, but A.J. Hinch plans on just using his entire bullpen. There is no manager better at platooning his position players. There's no manager that is better using the bullpen, uh, doing the matchups. And so to watch him in Houston, where he won world championships against his former team with a chance to eliminate him, Going up against Hunter Brown, who had his breakout year for the Astros, I, I think this game going to absolutely be fascinating. I think it's going to be very important for whoever's going to win that game to score early and uh, make an early statement in that game. Storylines are plenty everywhere we look, and we always look to our Jim Bowden for all the latest. Thank you, JB. All right, here's a look at your updated odds, according to our friends at FanDuel. Yanks, Phils, Dodgers, all on ice, waiting a dance partner, the Padres, playing in this wild card round, and you see why they are an in vogue pick to perhaps do it. Still get a nice plus number if you believe in the Pot Fathers.